Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Kanto 7 Chapter 9 Text 44 Translation and Commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupad Prayena Deva Munayaha Sva Vimukti Kamaha Maunam Charanti Vijane Na Para Artha Nishthaha Na Etan Vihaya Kriparnan Vimamukshe Ekaha Na Anyam Tvat Asya Sharanam Brahmataha Prayena Deva Munaya Svavimukti Kama Maunam Charanti Vijane Napararta Nishthaha Naitan Vihaya Kriparnan Vimamuksha Eko Nanyang Tvadasya Sharanam Brahmato Nupashye Brahmato Nupash Prayena Generally, in almost all cases, Deva, O my Lord, Muniyaha, the great saintly persons, Sva, personal, own, Vimukti, Kamaha, Ambitious for liberation from this material world. Monam silently. Charanti. They wonder. And here Srila Prabhupada adds some qualifying words. In places like the Himalayan forests where they have no touch with the activities of the materialists. Vijane in solitary places. Na, not. Para, artha, nishtaha. Uh, again, Srila Prabhupada gives an extended meaning. Interested in working for others, so that, that sums up para artha nishtaha and the whole uh, comment Prabhupada gives, interested in working for others by giving them the benefit of the Krishna conscious movement by enlightening them with Krishna consciousness. Na, not, etan, these, vihaya, leaving aside, kriparnan, how would you translate that? Kriparnan. Well, you can look at the what yeah, miser. And here Prabhupada has translated it as fools and rascals. Because they are misers, they are fools and rascals. That uh you will find in the Bhagavad Gita as it is commentary, Shil Srila Prabhupada quotes from Brihadaranyaka. Upanishad, Yagya Valkya speaking to Gargi, who is a Kripana, one who does not utilize the human form of life for attaining the Akshara, who does not, for not knowing the Akshara. 
the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead. So Srila Prabhupada gives more explanation of the word kripanam, uh, fools and rascals, and then engaged in materialistic activity who do not know the benefit of the human form of life. There should be a comma after the word activity, otherwise it doesn't properly make sense. Uh, this was recently re-typeset. It looks like they left out a comma. Ah, uh, what are we doing here? 7944. Vimamukshe. I desire to be liberated and to return home back to Godhead. Ekaha, alone. So this is Prahlad speaking, right? So what is he saying? I, I want to go, I desire to be liberated and return back to God, home back to Godhead alone. Is that what he's saying? What's the next word? Na, not. You have to be careful when translating. Sometimes you see translations and they, they miss the, the negative term and give the opposite meaning. Anyam other tvat but for you asya of this sharanam shelter brahmataha of the living entity rotating and wandering throughout the material universes. Anupashye do I see. Translation, Prahlad Maharaj speaking. My dear Lord, Narasim Hadev, I see that there are many saintly persons indeed, but they are interested only in their own deliverance. Not caring for the big cities and towns, they go to the Himalayas or the forest to meditate with vows of silence. Moonavrata. They are not interested in delivering others. As for me, however, I do not wish to be liberated alone, leaving aside all these poor fools and rascals. I know that without Krishna consciousness, without taking shelter of your lotus feet, one cannot be happy. Therefore, I wish to bring them back to shelter at your lotus feet. Purport. This is the decision of the Vaishnava, the pure devotee of the Lord. For himself he has no problems, even if he has to stay in this material world, because his only business is to remain in Krishna consciousness. The Krishna conscious person can go even to hell and still be happy. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj said, Naivod Vijay Paraduryatyaya Vaitaranyaha, O best of the great personalities, I am not at all afraid of material existence. The pure devotee is never unhappy in any condition of life. This is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam. Narayana para sarave nakutaschana bibhyati. Svargapa varga narakesh vapitul yartha darshinaha. Devotees solely engaged in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayana never fear any condition of life. For them, the heavenly planets, liberation, and the hellish planets are all the same. For such devotees are interested only in the service of the Lord. That's the end of that. Uh, translation, continuing the purport. For a devotee, being situated in the heavenly planets and being in the hellish planets are equal, for a devotee lives neither in heaven nor in hell, but with Krishna in the spiritual world. The secret of success for the devotee is not understood by the karmis and jnanis. Karmis therefore try to be happy by material adjustment, and jnanis want to be happy by becoming one with the supreme 
The devotee has no such interest. He is not interested in so-called meditation in the Himalayas or the forest. Rather, his interest is in the busiest part of the world where he, re where he teaches people Krishna consciousness. The Krishna consciousness movement was started for this purpose. We do not teach one to meditate in a secluded place just so that one may show that he has become very much advanced and may be proud of his so-called transcendental meditation, although he engages in all sorts of foolish materialistic activity. A Vaishnava like Prahlad Maharaj is not interested in such a bluff of spiritual advancement. Rather, he is interested in enlightening people in Krishna consciousness. <coughs> Because that is the only way for them to become happy. Prahalad Maharaj says clearly, Nanyang Tvadasya Sharanang Brahmato Nupashe. I know that without Krishna consciousness, without taking shelter of your lotus feet, one cannot be happy. One wanders within the universe, life after life, who by, but by the grace of a devotee, a servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one can get the clue to Krishna consciousness and then not only become happy in this world, but also return home back to Godhead. That is the real target in life. The members of the Krishna consciousness movement are not at all interested in so-called meditation in the Himalayas or the forest, where one will only make a show of meditation, nor are they interested in opening many schools for yoga and meditation in the cities. Rather, every member of the Krishna Consciousness Movement is interested in going door to door to try to convince people about the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as it is, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. That is the purpose of the Hare Krishna Movement. The members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement must be fully convinced that without Krishna, one cannot be happy. Thus, the Krishna Conscious Person avoids all kinds of pseudo-spiritualists, transcendentalists, meditators, monists, philosophers, and philanthropists. Prayena deva munaya svavimukti kamaha monam charanti vijane naparartha nishtaha Naitan vihaya kripanan vimamuksha eko nanyang tvad asya brahmato sharanang brahmato nupashi. <clears throat> My dear Lord Narasimha Dev, I see that there are many saintly persons indeed, but they are interested only in their own deliverance, not caring for the big cities and towns. They go to the Himalayas or the forest to meditate with vows of silence, mona vrata. They are not interested in delivering others. As for me, however, I do not wish to be liberated alone, leaving aside all these poor fools and rascals. I know that without Krishna consciousness, without taking shelter of your lotus feet, one cannot be happy. Therefore, I wish to bring them back to shelter at your lotus feet. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Nilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shreshtam Nanamapi Shachiputramatra Swarupam Rupam Tasyagutam Rupam Natarim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhava Sham Prapta Yasya Katita Kripaya Shri Gurantam Yatasya Vande ham shri guru shri ataf padakamalam shri gurun vaishtavans cha shri rupam sagraja tam sahagana raghuna tam vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam savadhutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam shri radha krishna pada sahagana lalita shri vishaka Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> there are many saintly persons indeed. 
persons who are being criticized here, indirectly criticized, they are accepted as being saintly. But at the same time they are being criticized for not being interested in delivering others. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada, he refers to persons who are not really saintly at all, but are just making a show of being saintly. So there are two classes here, and the borderline between them might be uh, <clears throat> not very clear to understand. On the one hand, Srila Prabhupada, he <clears throat> wanted to spread Vedic culture, Indian culture, sometimes he referred to Hindu culture, he mostly didn't, but sometimes he did. Uh, Bharatiya Sanskriti, he used that term. He wanted to spread that all over the world. <coughs> uh, on the other hand, when speaking in public in India, he was stronger than in any other place. He was very, some of, some of his lectures in India, actually, the, especially toward the end, the last public lectures Srila Prabhupada gave were in Bombay in 1977. Prabhupada was extremely heavy. He was really strong. And people were getting up and leaving. And then afterwards, Prabhupada said, it's better to give the books because they may not, they, they may not be able to take what he said. Uh, I was just listening now to uh, Srila Prabhupada saying, you, you, you have to call these people, you have to tell them their mudhas. And he said, you may sometimes use soft language, but Srila Prabhupada he often didn't use soft language. He was very strong, but it was the strongness of a mother punishing a child to rectify <clears throat> out of deep love and compassion. This word compassion is sometimes, well, it's always misused when applied in the material sense. For instance, uh, most people, if they were asked to think of an example of compassion in the modern age, they would probably say, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, <clears throat> who picked up dead people from the street and put them in her home and they died there. And if they recovered, she put them back on the street. But Srila Prabhupada picked up people who were dying, which means everyone's dying, right? Anyone not dying? Everyone's dying. Coronavirus, no coronavirus. Everyone's dying and gave them the way to go beyond birth and death to go back home, back to Krishna, <clears throat> to the shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Now this uh, <clears throat> statement, Prahlad Maharaj says, uh, that people who are only interested in their own welfare, they're, they're, they're spiritually interested, but they're interested in their own welfare. This can also be applied to people who come to Vrindavan, but are not interested in the welfare of others. <clears throat> they, they want to go back to Godhead, which is good. It's much better to retire and live in Vrindavan and chant Hare Krishna and prepare yourself to go back to Godhead than to sit in Delhi in front of a TV and die and go to hell. <clears throat> Nevertheless, uh, I, I, yeah, and Srila Prabhupada, made, he, he wanted to make arrangement for that. You may remember reading in one of Prabhupada's Bhagavatam commentaries, that Srila Prabhupada says, we invite all the retired people of the world to come and live in Vrindavan. That's a lot of people. 
uh, Prabhupada said, we already have our guest house and we can construct new guest houses. You have to construct a lot of guest houses. If all the retired people of the world are going to come and live in Vrindavan. <coughs> so that, yeah, you, you wouldn't have enough space in Vrindavan. It would have to, and then you have to make multi-story. Yeah, now Vrindavan's going multi -story. Yeah, all of India is going multi-story now. <coughs> <clears throat> Although in, in Mayapur, Srila Prabhupada said for the residential buildings shouldn't go up, what was it, more than three stories. He didn't want, he didn't like high rise. For the temple it could be high rise, but not for the residential buildings. <clears throat> so that's very good to retire in Vrindavan, but Srila Prabhupada himself showed the example of retiring from family life uh, and coming to Vrindavan and the people who saw him there at that time, there will still be some people who in, in their... Ch them, you must meet many people here in Vrindavan who saw Prabhupada in Vrindavan when they were children. There will be old people now. <clears throat> So they must have presumed he's another Bengali Babu who's retired and he's come to live in Vrindavan. And they were surprised that he kept on going outside to Delhi and different places for preaching and for writing his, publishing his books and his Back to Godhead magazine. But Srila Prabhupada's plan in coming to Vrindavan was not to stay in Vrindavan. In one sense, he didn't need to come to Vrindavan because he's always in Vrindavan, as Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport here, that a devotee lives neither in heaven nor in hell, but with Krishna in the spiritual world. So Srila Prabhupada was clearly in that situation. So in one sense, he didn't have to come to Vrindavan, although naturally, if you, if you have to, we have to live somewhere, and if you're going to live somewhere in this world, then why not Vrindavan? If you're a devotee, naturally you want to live in Vrindavan or Mayapur or Puri or any other place connected, uh, directly connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <clears throat> uh, but Srila Prabhupada was always thinking how to go outside Vrindavan, which ultimately he did so in the most glorious of ways and brought Krishna consciousness to all the poor fools and rascals because he knew that without Krishna consciousness, without taking shelter of Krishna's lotus feet, one cannot be happy. Therefore, he wished to bring them back to shelter at Krishna's lotus feet. There are several verses in the Bhagavatam which they really... Uh, or maybe I was going to say they capture the mood of Srila Prabhupada. Well, they do, yes, but they, they, but Srila Prabhupada, he was very much in that mood of uh, this verse. And then yesterday I was, I quoted that verse, Tadvag Visargo Janataga Viplavaha. And the purport, Srila Prabhupada's purport to that verse, it's, it's almost like a manifesto for his plans for spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. He's, if the leaders of the world contribute 50% of their income, and then his, he wanted to interest the leaders of society. Ultimately, Krishna gave him the uh, what was considered almost the dregs of society. Dregs means... Shall I tell them what dregs means? It literally means when you make wine and then the, some sediment settles down to the bottom of the bottle. So it's, this, it's, the, it's the rubbish which goes to the bottom. So we talk about the dregs of society, the hippies. Almost, not quite, because they were lower than that, the bowery bums. <clears throat> but they're really uh, the persons who were considered the lowest and the worst, and Srila Prabhupada engaged in. Not you. Uh, <laughs> 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 
Well, I, I think I, 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 I employed that there. But uh, what did he say? He, probably, he, he didn't have much good to say about the hippies, actually. If you see in his... Sometimes he said, the good thing is they're not attached to their family. That's the good thing. It's the good thing about them. He said, Indians are too much attached. Uh, but Srila Prabhupada, he, he lifted up the fools and rascals and he wanted to save the whole world. And a major part of his plan in doing that was preaching Krishna consciousness among the fools and rascals in India. Because it's not... Don't mind me saying so, but it's not... Although birth in India is considered pious compared to taking birth elsewhere, it doesn't mean that simply by being born in India, you're automatically a very spiritual person. There was, uh, uh, there was one uh, very prominent person who used to live in Mathura, who was a complete demon. His name was Kangsa. <laughs> so, it's not that everyone born in India is a devotee. I mean, ultimately everyone is because keho mane, keho na mane, sab tar das. Some people accept it and some people don't. Everyone's his servant. Those who don't accept it, they're called demons, generally speaking. So, there are plenty of them also, but Srila Prabhupada, he concentrated a lot of his attention in preaching in India. And he wanted, he quoted so many times, Bharata Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Bharata Bhumite Hoilo, Manusha Janmaja, Janma Sharta Kori Koro Para Upaka. So uh, most Indian people are very interested in making their life, their Janma Sartak, Sa Arta. They want to get money. They're very interested in that. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Janma Sata Kari, he didn't mean get a lot of money. He meant to chant Hare Krishna and go back to Godhead. Janma Sata Kari, Koro Para Upaka, and work for the benefit of others. And by Para Upaka, uh, Srila Prabhupada didn't mean uh, mundane philanthropists. By the, uh, at the end of this purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, the Krishna conscious person avoids all kinds of pseudo-spiritualists, transcendentalists, meditators, monists, philosophers, and philanthropists. By philanthropists we can understand those who are interested in bodily and social welfare work. <clears throat> uh, the amazing or, or paradoxical situation is that if one wants to do good for others, you have to fight with them. Because they are, a, a term that Srila Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur used, upper swartha parayana, the swart. Everyone's interested in swart, self-interest. Uh, and here in the seventh canto we find Prahlad Maharaj saying, Nate vidu swartagatim hi vishnum durasha ye bahirata maninas and hayatan dairupaniyamanas te pishatan triam urudamni badhaha. That people in general, they do not know that their real self interest is in recognizing that we are all servants of Krishna. What's so fascinatingly? Interesting. Oh, Krishna. <laughs> well, at this time it's supposed to be Shabda Brahma. And I put Krishna at the lotus feet of Tulsi. You have to think about that, right? Oh, by the way, I thought now that Simma, you the Panchatattva here are dancing above the head of Banke Bihari. You might want to rectify that. There are so many things. <clears throat> so the people don't know that their real goal of life is Krishna and they have many material desires which are not good for them. 
They're stuck on the external platform of, and they like to be led by, they're blind and they like to be led by blind people. The elections, always there's some elections going on. In India there are either elections about to be going on, or going on, or just finished. It's always like that, isn't it? Just in Delhi, they finished, and somewhere else soon there'll be some other elections. But no one, no one is coming and saying, we're going to establish Krishna conscious society, and you can vote for that. But the one who can make more factories, more slaughterhouses. Recently in Bhopal, there was some, some protest because the slaughterhouse, they were going to make a new slaughterhouse next to several temples. But it wasn't that they were making a new slaughterhouse. They weren't protesting about that. But they were protesting it's close to temples. So they should say, you move it somewhere else. Mm. Uh, so people, uh, they don't know and therefore they get more and more entangled, in, tightly tied up in material existence. <clears throat> now, you'd think that if someone comes to them and says that, well, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. This is what you really need to do. They say, oh, thank you very much. But even in India, most people don't. <clears throat> Why is that? Matiyana Krishna parata svatova mito vibhadyeta griha vratanam They've, they've, they've already decided it's, it's, a, uh, it's an axiom in everyone's mind, an, an, an unarguable point that we should be happy in material existence. And therefore, if you tell people you have to surrender to Krishna, and this, this is what we really need to do, then uh, they, be, they may become angry <coughs> because they are Apa Swarta Parayana. They're attached to that which is against their real self-interest. What could be more foolish than being attached to something which is against your self-interest? But even materially it's like that. And the, the uh, evidence of that is you see anyone who's smoking. Because on the cigarette packet it says things like cancer, smoking causes cancer, smoking. There's the... Uh, the, uh, what do they call that? The, some, in America they say something like the Director General of the United States Department of Health has uh, ascertained that smoking can kill you. Or something like that. Or, and, and, and some they condense it down to two words, smoking kills. And still people, they smoke. They buy, it's written in big letters on the packet. Still they smoke. They, have, they go, they work hard, they get money. <laughs> what could be more foolish? Even if you think that mat material happiness, I want to be happy materially, but for that you need a healthy body, right? Even if you have lots of money, if you're unhealthy, then life is miserable. And you have lots of money, it's also miserable, but there's some illusion that I shouldn't be miserable. Uh, but if you're unhealthy, then, unless you're a transcendentalist, it's hard to be happy. That's why Mahananda here is a very popular person. Not because he's chanting Hare Krishna, but because he cures people from... Now, I've, now you'll be harassed all day after I told him that. Uh, <clears throat> So no, people, uh, they are addicted to that which is against their real self-interest. And if we try to tell them what's in their real self-interest, then in many cases they become angry. I, that was how long ago? In Telangana we met those Hindu preachers, that was about a month ago, something like that. And these, these were people who are supposed to be preaching Hinduism to stop the Christian onslaught of conversion. And uh, I, I, I said, okay, let's read the first verse of Bhagavatam to give a real eye. Because the, the Christians are talking about God, the Hindus are talking about God. Let's see what the Bhagavatam says to give a real conception. And he became so angry. And, and one time, two times, he was. I said, please just listen. And then he just ran out of the room and wouldn't come back again.
Hare Krishna. So it can be very tough preaching. One way, because there are so many pious people in India who are inclined to bhakti. So one way we can preach is to tell them all the nice things about bhakti and don't tell them the things. There's, you chant Hare Krishna, you don't tell them you have to surrender and all this kind of thing. Uh, uh, and because people are pious, they know that, well, meat eating is not very good. That's why at Navaratri, the, instead of 600 trucks of meat coming in daily to Murgi Mandi in Delhi, only 60 trucks come and 540 trucks less. So it's Navaratri, it's not that the Muslims stopped eating meat, uh, it's the Hindus. So they, they stop eating meat because they know it's not right, during, during Navaratri at least. So they know actually it's not very good. So if you preach them a little bit, they can often become vegetarian. If they're not already vegetarian, there's still many people who are vegetarian. Of course, our movement's not meant for making vegetarians. There are plenty of monkeys in Vrindavan, as you may have noticed, and they're mostly vegetarian. Sometimes monkeys can eat meat, chimpanzees, but mostly they don't. And the monkeys in Vrindavan are good sadhus, so they don't. At least they, I haven't seen, I haven't seen. So, you know, to get people to follow the regulated principles, uh, especially among the middle class kind of people, already somewhat cultured, and most of them aren't alcoholics, or that most of them don't drink a lot. Although among the lower class people, many of them drink a lot, so it's difficult, the men, so it's difficult to get them to stop that. So it's quite easy to get them, not easy, but relatively speaking, it's relatively easier in India to get people to chant Hare Krishna and follow the principles than it is, for instance, in America, among the non-Indian population of America, because people are more pious. <clears throat> However, to get them to fully accept this philosophy and apply themselves to it, that may not be so very easy. Prabhupada's purports are very strong, pinching. Uh, <clears throat> for instance, as again, this purport, Srila Prabhupada finishes it by saying, the Krishna conscious person avoids all kinds of pseudo-spiritualists, transcendentalists, meditators, monists, philosophers, and philanthropists. That's just about everybody who the average pious Hindu holds in high regard. Pseudo-spiritualists, pseudo-transcendentalists, pseudo-meditators, monists, Practically, Srila Prabhupada is saying that all these sadhus, they're all bogus. He doesn't exactly say it in those words. And then philosophers and philanthropists. Now, if we tell people we're going to build schools and hospitals and feed the poor, and the average pious Hindu will think, well, that's, that's para upakar, doing good for others. If we want to raise funds, and we say we're going to build a school for the poor children. Uh, now people will be, oh, very, very good. But if we tell them we're only going to teach them from Prabhupada's books, they'll say, very bad. Why are you doing that? What, what are they going to do in future? How are they going to fill their belly by chanting Bhagavad Gita? People say like that. Even our own devotees say like that. <laughs> because we preach to them like that, that we should open hospitals and schools and all this kind of thing. So it's, it's relatively easy to get people to chant Hare Krishna, but to fully surrender to Krishna's instructions as given by Krishna's representative, Srila Prabhupada, that, that's a more difficult thing because people are upper swartha parayana. They're attached to that which is against their own self-interest. They're attached to what Srila Prabhupada refers to as the 
polluted aim of life. Polluted aim of life. The idea that we shall be happy in this world and we want to be good people, but being good means to help people to live happily in this world. And if they chant Hare Krishna, all right, that's very good. But the main aim of life is to be happy in this material world. Just like we often see young men want to join this movement and the parents say, well, you stay at home and chant Hare Krishna. What's the difference? They don't see any. Well, they do see a difference. They see a difference that my child already invested so many lakhs of rupees in his education and uh, now he's just going to go away. And what do, I, what do I get out of it? It's, uh, I, I just presumed he'd be a good boy and uh, get a good job and earn lots of money and now he just lost. Uh. So people uh, with this polluted aim of life, they may be pious, but they have a polluted aim of life because they're led by the blind and they like that. They like to be led by the blind. And so their idea of uh, being a good Hindu is that you contribute for various welfare projects. This idea was brought in by Vivekananda, that manava seva is madhava seva. <coughs> and the Christians, they're making hospitals and schools, so we also have to do the same thing. That's why they called it the Ramakrishna mission. Why did they call it mission? It's an English word, obviously. And uh, that was adopted from the idea of the Christian missionaries who open hospitals and schools, and then their idea is to convert people. So the idea is that, you see, they're, they're better than us because they're looking after the people. We're not looking after our people. So we should... Actually, it's a long history how these things were going on in society, and then the, the, uh, the British changed the whole social structure, and then... The, the rajas and who are supposed to do all these social welfare works, they didn't do it because they were, they were disempowered. And it's a long history. But anyway, um, <clears throat> this idea is very prominent now that to be a Hindu spiritual leader, you have to do something good for the people in terms of their bodily and social welfare. But the real understanding is that bodily and social welfare is not of any real value whatsoever. Not saying that there shouldn't be bodily and social welfare. But to promote that as the goal of life is wrong, because it's not. Because however comfortably you may live, you have to die, and then dying without knowing Krishna is... Uh, Waste of life, the, the opportunity of human life is lost. So we have to, often we have to uh, fight with people. We have to tell people what they need to hear. They don't, rather than what they like to hear. If we tell people, chant Hare Krishna, they say, oh, okay, nice, yeah. And then uh, fully accept the instructions of Chaitan, Chaitanya Chandra Charane Kurutanu Ragaha. Yeah, giving up all the nonsense hogwash ideas, you fully surrender at the lotus feet of Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Listen, don't make photos now. <clears throat> so they may not be so willing for that. So we find it's, it's very good preaching of our movement if we tell people, you chant Hare Krishna, and you contribute for schools and hospitals and all these kinds of things. Many people like it, so that mostly in India nowadays, people think that the Hare Krishna movement, ISKCON, is a movement that feeds poor children and opens hospitals. It's a fact. It is a fact. They don't know that the main aim is to give the message of Bhagavad Gita. They know we also distribute these books. Uh, but they don't, the message which Prabhupada came to give is not getting out, even to our own devotees, because we're giving another message. Whoops, I'm not supposed to say things. I just remember. 
I'm not supposed to. Anyway, too late. Uh, so uh, preaching means we can see the result of preaching when people understand what Prabhupada was teaching, especially the supposed to be educated section of society. They can understand. Some things people have understood. One thing that was a very strong point of contention when Srila Prabhupada first brought Western disciples to India was that Westerners cannot be Brahmanas or sannyasis. Brahmanas or sannyasis. I was just listening to Srila Prabhupada. He didn't mention the name, but I can un from the context it's clear he was referring to the Shankaracharya of Puri, who was saying that these Westerners, they can enter the temple, they can be they have to take birth again. And Prabhupada was not happy with him at all. Uh, <clears throat> he said he doesn't, he doesn't know the philosophy. That He said such a person is not fit to be a guru. He calls himself Jagat Guru, but he's not gone anywhere. He hasn't gone over the Jagat. He's just sitting in one place. <clears throat> so that's widely, not still not fully accepted, but it's widely accepted. And there that that Westerners can be Brahmanas because there are various reasons. Srila Prabhupada established in Vrindavan, Krishna Balaram Temple, and people come and they see a very good standard of deity worship, which was practically unique in India at the time. No one was looking after deities and decorating so nicely at the time. Srila Prabhupada revolutionized deity worship. And that's another point. That Prabhupada made the standard so high for everyone to come up to, and now we're bringing it down again in the name of uh, whatever, worshipping Gornitai dolls or whatever. <coughs> uh, but people see that uh, when, when they see devotees who are living as devotees and they know Shastra, which, which their own children don't know, and they see a Brahmana, what is it to be a Brahmana? You know, what does it mean to be a Brahman in India today? It means your name is Sharma. Here's a, here's a Sharma right here. He's, he's a Brahmana, Vaishnava. Otherwise, by, now he's retired, but by job, he was a highly placed, well-respected Shudra. Don't mind me saying. But to accept a salary from the government of Bahrain is... Shvavriti, the mode of living of a dog. Don't mind me saying, but it's in the Shastra. And we've known each other for many years. So. <laughs> I can, and I'm a sannyasi. And he accepts that I'm a sannyasi, so I can get away with it. But not recommended for everyone to just go up to the nearest Sharma and say, actually, you're a dog. <laughs> not generally recommended. He might send a gunda to kill you. Or he might be a gunda who's killing others also. Because there's one, I saw one terrorist, a gunda, they arrested. Some, his name was something Pujari. Ravi Pujari. Yeah. So he, he's a gunda. There's, there's no money in being a Pujari. So, so be a gunda. <laughs> if people don't give us money, we'll take it. <clears throat> so, uh, that one thing in India, it's widely accepted, not by everyone, that Westerners can be Brahmanas. Uh, and by social conditions, most of the Brahmanas, even if they want to live as Brahmanas, they are forced to do some job or something like that. <clears throat> the, uh, so, it, it's become meaningless. If you're a Sharma or a Shukla or whatever, you are, there's no advantage. In fact, it's a disadvantage 
because the reserv you don't get reservations. It's a, it's a social advantage to be at the bottom level of society because then you have more chance of getting the reservation. <coughs> so, for various reasons, then that's accepted. But, but many of the points of our philosophy that people don't know at all. Um, in fact, they have a misimpression. In, in one city, one devotee, or a few devotees, they went to open a center, and one man offered, I'll give you so much land and so many crores of rupees, you build a hospital and manage it. It's gone. And he said, well, we don't do it. He said, what do you mean you don't do it? You do do it. He thought that's what we are supposed to be doing because that's the impression that people get because that's what we do. Of course, if we say ISKCON opens hospitals, from within inside ISKCON, say, no, 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 we don't. But then when they ask you, what are you doing for the people? They say, well, we open hospitals. So it depends on who you're talking to. But the, the impression is that this movement is opening hospitals and feeding the poor. But uh, <coughs> the purpose of the Krishna conscious movement is, Prabhupada writes here, to convince people about the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as it is the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And that we're a long, long way from doing. That people uh, can understand the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as it is, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. So that is a great challenge for this movement. Those of you who are being trained in the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as it is, actually we're talking about the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam, but of course the very basis of that is Bhagavad Gita as it is. Otherwise you can't even begin to enter into the Srimad Bhagavatam. That, that's the chance to absorb that knowledge and to teach that to others. Janma, Shartak, Kari, Koro, Pora, Upaka. Make one's life successful by Krishna consciousness and do good to others. So just like Srila Prabhupada came to India, came to Vrindavan, and he sat here for some time, he had, that was preparation. Writing the first canto of Bhagavata was preparation. And with that, he went out. He had a plan, not that he was just coming to Vrindavan and doing some scholarly work, but he had a plan to take that out to the world beyond. So, that can be your plan also. Of course, you could be a teacher also uh, in a school like this, because there will always be schools like this needed. Actually, Srila Prabhupada wanted every one of his centers every ISKCON center to be a Varnashram college. So this kind of teaching should go in, on in every center of ISKCON. <laughs> that the devotees are given a, a thorough knowledge of the books of Srila Prabhupada and how to apply them. Uh, <clears throat> but this is, the, uh, this is the mission, this is the mood of Srila Prabhupada and it's the, the mood of Prahlad Maharaj, that Srila Prabhupada very much, uh, he embodied. Otherwise, people are spoiling their lives. <laughs> Just two evenings ago, I was speaking to a, a young woman from Delhi who is the daughter of one of my disciples, and she's going to, she wants to go to America to study psychology. No, I'm getting mixed up between two different daughters. So one of them, she's, she's going to go, and uh, she's in Bombay now, she's studying something, and she has an aim to start a business, and this and that, and not marry. That is very strong, not marry. And uh, she's convinced, you know, I'm going to do my business and this and that. And what are you doing? <laughs> you're spoiling your life. But they're, they're, women, you've got to get out and do something big and prove yourself. Actually, I should tell, well, who is that? Your wife. 
I should tell your wife to speak to her, because she did that, right? She was in Dubai and getting ahead in the corporate world and totally miserable. But it's this idea, especially women, you've got to you've got to make a big thing, show yourself, we can do it. And they just end up completely miserable. Even more miserable than the men who try to make a big show, big show of themselves. Because it's, even materially, it doesn't fit with their, the psychological makeup that Mother Nature has given to them. So, young, ambitious, you can do it. I can do it. Young, ambitious, foolish. What can you do? You, you, you can't start. It's just like someone's jumping off the cliff and you, you can't stop them. It's by law you're not allowed to stop them. It's, you, you have to give them their freedom. And the present government is very much into that. Women empowerment. Women already empowered by Krishna to give birth to children. Men can't do that. They're never going to be equal rights. Because women give birth to children. Men can't do that. So they have their empowerment. And if they follow, that's, that's a major theme of the Bhagavad Gita, isn't it? To follow one's own swadharma. Shrayan svadharma vigurna. Paradharma bhayavaha. To follow one. That we have a certain psycho-physical makeup given to us according to karmana daiva nitrena jantur deho papatya. According to our according to our previous activities and our desires under the supervision of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we have a certain we have a certain kind of body. So if we act with that certain kind of body to serve Krishna, Swakaramana Tam Abhyarcha, Siddhing Bindati Manavaha. That's the easy way to get perfection. Act according to our psychophysical makeup in a manner ordained by Shastra to worship Krishna. And we can attain perfection. But this idea, we have to, I have to show myself to be very great and prove myself. It's the Ishvara Ham Maham Bhogi, Ishvara Bhav, in the wrong way. Ishvara Bhav is already also there in Bhagavad Gita for the Kshatriyas. That's one of their qualities, Ishvara Bhav. But that means that they, they act as the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead to protect others. So for Kshatriyas, that's good. But for, for someone else to think, I, Ishvaro, yeah, I, I'm on top of the world. I, I'm enjoying myself. Siddhoham, I don't need anyone's help. I can do everything by myself. I'm happy. Internally, they're miserable, but you have to show you're happy. Otherwise, you're a failure. That's the worst word in all of India, isn't it? It's not... Surabhatya, that's not the worst word. The worst word is failure. If you're a failure, fasi lagana, kutko. Isn't it? The worst thing, failure, if you're a failure. The devotee was telling me, I, I want, I, I really, you know, I'm, I'm fed up with my business. I want to leave and go to the country and start a farm, Chanhai Krishna. But he said, the only thing, I'm afraid, everyone will say, I'm running away. You are running away. It's, it makes sense to run away. If a tiger's chasing you, you should run away. Or, well, maybe it doesn't make sense, because the tiger will get you anyway. Maybe just chant Hare Krishna. But, but anyway, if there's something bad, it makes sense to run away from it, doesn't it? So if, if, the, if you're in a situation where it's absolutely horrible now, and you're going to go to hell, then run away from it. But oh, what will people say? It's the blind people are accusing me. There's that story uh, that comes in a very early Back to Godhead. It was actually written by uh, Hanuman Prasad Poda. Prabhupada had him write an article. Have you all heard of Hanuman Prasad Poda? You all read Gita Press books. <laughs> anyway, uh, he wrote an article 
about the two sides of a river. Maybe you know this. We used to do dramas of this. It's very good drama. On one side of the river, people are living very happily. Uh, and on the other side of the river, people are miserable. And they all carry big bags of stones on their back. And the more heavy the bag of stones you can carry, the more you're considered a success. So sometimes on the stone-carrying side of the river, people, they look, they, they look up from holding their bags, and they look up, and they look at the people, they're all living very happily, singing and dancing, and the people on the other side of the river say, why don't you come and join us? I think, well, yeah, I could come and join. But I can't cross the river without putting down my stones. Then leave your stones and come. How can I leave my stones? Everyone will blame me. They'll say I'm a failure. So that's it exactly, isn't it? People, upper swartha parayana, they're attached to that which does them no good. Joro bidda, jato maya bhaiba, toma bhajane bhadha, mohajanamiya, anitta shangsari, jeev ke koreye gadha. Mundane education is simply a display of maya. Uh, it's an obstacle in serving Krishna. And in, in this world of birth and death, where everything is temporary, it increases the illusion and makes us into asses. The example is given of an ass. He carries things which are of no benefit to him whatsoever. Rocks, for instance. Sometimes you see them carrying rocks. Nowadays, they, everything is done by tempo. The asses don't have a job anymore. They just keep them for giving donkey's milk for people who have, what is it, diabetes or something. Donkey's milk is, hmm? Yeah, it's, the, the, only, the only function is donkey's milk. And you can keep them in a zoo and have donkey protection or something like that. Ah... <clears throat> uh, but the other, the other, one thing carrying rocks, and the other great profession of the asses used to be the, the Dobie's ass. And you'd used to see, used to see a big, huge pile of washing going down the street with four little thin legs underneath it. You can't, you can hardly see the ass, just a huge pile of washing with a little bit of head sticking out at the front, a little bit of tail at the back, and four legs. And that was the uh, carrying something which is no, of no benefit to him whatsoever. So it's like this, this mundane education. You learn so many things which, are, which not only, most of it's not helpful at all in any way whatsoever uh, to what you're going to do in future. <laughs> and just like uh, yeah, one teacher at school, the school I was in, he said, you just, yeah, I, yeah, we would, there was some class on sociology, and I just said, this is all nonsense. And the teacher said, yeah, but you just have to study it, and then you finish your exam, and the moment you finish your exam, you can just forget it, that's all. <laughs> so most of it's useless. I remember, I was just studying about fishermen in one city in England called Hull, and how they come back from the ship and they go around the pubs and they get drunk. And what's the use of... Everyone knows fishermen get drunk. I mean, they give it all these fancy names like Anami and all these, all these names. And you have to learn the names of Durkheim and Weber and all this just to, just to say that fishermen, they get drunk. So what? What's new? So, uh, a lot of what you study at the school is useless, but a lot, or, or the whole attitude that comes with it is a lot worse than useless, because you get the idea that you have to study, and the more you study, the more of a success you are. But actually, you're not a success, it's just the opposite. Because you're, you're, it's piling on more stones, more rubbish in our head. The whole idea that we become successful by 
material advancement. So, if we want to preach what Prabhupada has given in his books, it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. Now I'm saying these things. I don't know what you're thinking, but so far you're respectful and polite. But if I'd been doing this in, say, the Lions Club or the Rotary Club, by now they would have stopped me. They wouldn't be able to tolerate. I used to sometimes give talks in Rotary Clubs. And I used to tell them, I used to be in the Rotary Club, but I left. I say, oh, which Rotary Club? It's called Repeated Birth and Death. <laughs> I left that club. Everyone's in the Rotary Club. You don't have to join the Rotary Club. <clears throat> it hurts. It hurts. It's, it's that to give up the polluted aim of life. But this is really what we need to communicate. More than uh, rules of Sanskrit grammar and this and that. That is required for what you are doing. But that, the, what you're being taught, the essence is not rules of Sanskrit grammar. Because there have been so many expert Sanskrit grammarians who missed the whole point. And even Shankara himself says, what does he say in this regard? Bhajagovindam, Samprapte Sanihite Kale Nahi Nahi Rakshati Dukrin Karane. Even Shankara says, who he himself was, in, he was expert in what Prabhupada called word jugglery, in twisting the grammar to, to mean something else. And it was, but that's, and therefore, we need Vaishnav scholars to put people's brain in order when it's been all messed up by studying Shankara's commentaries. That's required. And that, that's how the Vaishnav Acharyas, they replied to Shankara. Practically the whole of Vaishnavism after Shankara, Ramanuja, he's, his teachings are based on Shankara refuting Shankara. And Madhva, his teachings are based on refuting uh, Shankara and Ramanuja. Or he, he said he didn't like Ramanuja either because he thought Vishish Advaita, he didn't like that word at all. Advaita, he didn't like it. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Chan Hare Krishna. And then why, why not refuting all that? Already the previous Vaishnava Acharyas did that. So if you want to get into big Vedanta studies, already the, it's still they're doing. Madhva scholars still get into disputes up to the present day with Shankara scholars. And they have discussions and this and that, which no one else can understand. But it doesn't make any difference to anyone or anything. It's, a, it's like a kind of spot going on. But at that time, they were very, very serious. So nowadays we need to uh, convince people in the in the vernacular languages. One reason why Buddhism was able to spread was because it was they didn't need to be in Sanskrit because they didn't accept the Vedas, and so they they did in vernacular languages, and it could spread very easily. So uh, we have, have to convince people of the facts that everything. The members of the Krishna Conscious Movement must be fully convinced that without Krishna one cannot be happy. That's it, in essence. That's what we have to convince people. And so many things we may have to go through. You're, you're specializing in Sanskrit and commentaries. Others will have to specialize in uh, science because in the name of science there's so much misleading. It's just as important as, as studying the Srimad Bhagavatam and the commentaries is if someone has a science background, they can use that to prove that what the scientists are saying is all wrong if they don't recognize Krishna. And there's a Bhagavatam verse for scientists also. What's that? And there are many, but what's that? Does anyone know? What Prabhupada said should be the motto of the Bhaktivedanta Institute. Anyone? Idang hipung sas tapasashutasya vas vishtasya suttasya. Chabuddhidatayo ho, avichutarto, kavibhya nirupita, 
ya uttama shloka gunanu varnanam that all endeavors tapasya idang hipung says tapasa shuta studying the shastra performing sacrifices and worship all these intellectual pursuits they all reach their perfection if they're used for glorification of krishna So anyway, that's the point. The purpose of the Krishna Conscious Movement is to try to convince people about the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita as it is, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And what is that? Without Krishna, without Krishna, one cannot be happy. That is the point. And without Krishna means we have to surrender to Krishna and accept Bhagavad Gita as it is. It's it's. You might think that studying all the Sanskrit is a bit tough, but actually convincing people that they have to surrender to Krishna, it's, it's a lot tougher. You have a lot of experience all your life, right? Struggling there in Orissa, Manchester. Tough job. Hare Krishna. I'm going to finish there. I've taken lots of your time. All glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Hmm. Uh, so I, I listened to the class and I was thinking, you know, you're saying so many things about people coming to Vrindavan and just being, you know, just staying here and how they are not preaching. They're just benefiting themselves. You know, and... Uh, and devotees, you know, they should preach. But at the same time, this, we're hearing about pseudo-spiritualism, you know, people who are pretending. You know, they're just taking some advantage, abusing spiritual things for the sense gratification. They want to get something out of it for sense gratification. And even preachers are doing that. Preachers are doing that. They're the worst. They're the worst cheats you've ever seen. So my question is, Lord Chaitanya says, first become perfect and then preach. So what does he mean? What does Lord Chaitanya mean, say, when he says, make your life perfect and then... Um, well, in regard to this, when Prabhupada was asked about this, that uh, someone says, first you have to become perfect, then only you should preach. And Prabhupada said, then you'll never become perfect. It, it's, re it's a relative, so the Prabhupada explained, it's, it's, it's uh, relative perfection. Because no one, a Vaishnava never thinks I'm perfect. We have the idea of, just like if you do yoga, Patanjali yoga, you get the idea of siddhi, and then you attain some siddhi. But Vaishnavas, no, I, I remember some place in Ireland, I was supposed to give a talk, some public talk, and I was advertised as a bhakti yoga master, because they, they have like this, this, this different kinds of yoga, raja yoga master. But it's a completely different conception in, in, in bhakti. The idea is not to become a master. So, uh, in different places, Srila Prabhupada has said that uh, if one is chanting, uh, well, specifically in the first verse of the Upadesh Amrita and Prabhupada's, no, not the first verse, the, uh, is it the first? No, it's not the first verse. He said, Dikshas Tichet Parnatibis Shabadantam Isham. Uh, what's the next line? Nindadi Shunya. What is the verse? Nindadi Shunya. Hridayam Ipsita Sangal. Labda. So, Srila Prabhupada says that, um, talking about an Uttamadikari, he says that one who is chanting 60 rounds, following the four regulated principles, and is always saying how to spread the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world can be accepted as an Uttamadikari. That's one definition he gave. So, but, of course, there is also the idea of false devotee. Karmi, jnani, mitcha, bhakta, nahoitate, anurakta. 
Narottam Das says, Me, I will not be attached to karmis, jnanis, and false devotees. So that's there also. And we also have in the Chaitanya Charitamrita the description of the Bhakti Lata, the growing creeper of devotional service. But it's also one that there may be plants which look like the Bhakti Lata, but which are not. And we, we may be nourishing the wrong kind of plant which actually chokes the Bhakti Lata. So, it, it requires... Uh, sincerity and mercy to be able to understand the difference. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarsar Thakur, practically so much of his mission was in cutting out the wrong ideas. His real aim was to give Krishna Prem, but he had to cut through so many wrong ideas. So that will always be there. And uh, Prabhupada's warnings are there, how this movement can be sidetracked. So that's that. But in speaking here, I'm presuming that who I'm speaking to, everyone's very sincere to serve Prabhupada's mission. That's presumed. If you want to take advantage of the Krishna Conscious Movement for la puja pratishta, for profit adoration and distinction, then probably coming and studying at this school isn't the best way to go about it. There's not a lot of love, puja or pratishta going on here, I, I suspect. Ah. His question is, like, a pseudo-devotee, he knows, like, uh, my ambition is to go to Krishna. But a pseudo-devotee knows, my ambition is to, to go, go to, to Krishna. Krishna. But how Krishna... Um, how Krishna sees this? Pseudo-devotee. No, then, uh, pseudo-devotee means one who's pretending to be a devotee. But, uh, it... it what you're saying, someone who thinks my aim is to go to Krishna, but their, their understanding is mixed up very badly with the polluted aim of life, that, that would more qualify as a Kanishta Adhikari. Kanishta Adhikari is not, it can be borderline, or the two kinds can be mixed up, but the neophyte devotee is not mentioned as one who's deliberately cheating or making a show of devotional service, but Jaha Komal Shraddha, who has got weak faith in pure devotional service, which means the, the, their ideas are mixed up with material ideas. But they're not deliberately misleading others in the name of devotion. But it can morph from the... If one doesn't try to get better association and improve, then it's like one becomes fixed in that and one starts preaching that and then one becomes a pseudo-devotee. How does Krishna see it? Well, Krishna knows what is what. Krishna gives us the right way to understand through Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. Maharaj, <clears throat> Maharaj, I, have, uh, I was spending the last 25 days in Mayapur with a very high-profile devotees of a society. Don't ask me questions that I may say something critical. I was just yes, told I so, shouldn't do that. Yes, so I'm not, <coughs> so I have seven questions, uh, but I, I would like to ask you in person, and if you permit me, I'll show you the questions, and if you allow, we can record that, because it is just clarification. Uh, m there are some misunderstandings regarding what you teach, misunderstandings, and uh, <coughs> so, I noticed See, what you say misunderstanding, some of us say is the proper understanding. <laughs> how, how are we to adjudicate this? Then we have to see Guru, Sadhu and Shastra, especially we have to see through Prabhupada's books and yes. his broader teachings. So Maharaj, is it okay with you if, if we can... Okay, fire away. Personally, if we can... Fire up. Oh, okay. If I don't like it, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't mind, but I'm, I'm supposed to be. Okay. So what Speak no evil. 
So what is your understanding of bridge preaching? See my book on speaking strongly in Srila Prabhupada's service. If you have to summarize this in... Bridge preaching. It means all preaching is bridge preaching because every we're, on, we're supposed to be on one side of the Vaitarani and they're supposed to be on the other. So we're supposed to be bringing them over. The bridge is Krishna consciousness. But you have to make contact with them. If you just go and tell them, surrender to Krishna, they don't even know who Krishna is. So you have to, you have to make some kind of communication at their level. But the idea is to bring them over. If you get stuck on the bridge or if you get pulled over that side, then it's bridge preaching in reverse. You get pulled over. Otherwise, all preaching is bridge preaching. <laughs> Except in the case of very exalted souls where Narad comes to Vyasadev and tells him, you're, this is, you're, you're doing all nonsense and you should just glorify Krishna. But that's... Otherwise, for most people, how are you? Where are you coming from? How do you feel? This and that. You, you make some... Try to make some kind of relationship and then you sell them a book or... or you try to give them the message of Bhagavad Gita like that. All preaching is bridge preaching. But uh, we should follow Prabhupada's example and see what he did. He did things which were pleasing to the public. Rathiatra is very pleasing to the public. He's directly Krishna conscious. Uh, in Bombay, he married devote, Western devotees on stage in front of thousands of people and said, this is the real United Nations. People loved it. It's not exactly the message of Bhagavad Gita. This is the real United Nations. But in another way it is. Next question. But, uh, sorry. Well, here, here in this purport, Srila Prabhupada said, he says that the members of the Krishna Gorgeous not movement are not at all interested in so-called meditation, nor are they interested in opening many schools for yoga and meditation in the cities. That's a pretty straightforward statement, isn't it? If you're seeing as there are so many. Now we find that ISKCON Center is being opened with yoga studios. But Prabhupada says right in the purport here, we're not interested in making yoga studios. We say, well, we get people to chant Hare Krishna. Well, you can go to a yoga studio and get people to chant Hare Krishna. You don't have to make a yoga studio to do that. In one country I was in, the, the, uh, they had a regular yoga class. And I came in, the dev a devotee was giving a yoga class. And then I, I was supposed to come in and give a talk after that. And they convinced some of the people at the yoga class run by a devotee, to stay because they see it's a very high-level devotee. And he said, I said, actually, this yoga, it's all nonsense. I just told them straightforwardly. <laughs> it's because the real goal of life is to understand who we are. We're spiritual living beings. We're not the body. And doing this yoga makes it, unless we have a clear understanding that we're not the body, it makes us more in bodily consciousness. And I said to the yoga teacher who's initiated devotee, this is useless for preaching. And he agreed. <laughs> He'd been doing it for so many months. I said, these people, they've got no... Another place I went to where for months they'd been doing... Uh, in a, it was in America somewhere. Some, for months they'd been just calling all the students and giving them... having kirtan and prasadam. And then I spoke some philosophy. They weren't used to it. They didn't like it at all, even after months of kirtan and prasadam, because they hadn't been told the philosophy. I, I, they really didn't like it. So, uh, about feeding, Prabhupada said that to simply to give prasad without kirtan and spiritual instruction is nonsense. So, he had to give them instruction also. Otherwise, anyway, just like Sai Baba's followers, they, they all chant the holy names. But they don't make any spiritual advancement. So, you have to get the message has to be given. It may be given with sugar-coated pills. But the message has to be given. Anyway, it's I wrote about it in that book, the what on speaking strongly in Srila Prabhupada's service. Yeah. The real reason for which Srila Prabhupada started the society. The real reason I already read it three or four times from here. 
members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement are interested in going door to door to try to convince people about the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as it is the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. That is the purpose of the Hare Krishna Movement. It's about the fourth time I read it already. So, what is your message to the preachers of this society? What is the message to the preachers of this society? Especially for those who are not following the well, lines. Well, I, 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 I... Who's going to listen? <laughs> Read Prabhupada's books, listen to his lectures, and repeat. That's all. It's not a difficult thing to understand. It's a difficult thing to do. It's more difficult... If we actually try to do it, we'll find it's not so easy. It's a simple thing. Prabhupada explained it so many times. Jare Deko, Tare Kaha, Krishna Upadesh. You just take the message as you've heard it and repeat it. You may do it in your own language. It may not be in exactly the same linguistic format that Srila Prabhupada did so. In fact, those who are going among scientists and trying to present this, he specifically said, you present it in scientific language. So it may be the, 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 the linguistic format may be different, but the message ultimately has to be the same. There's an example of bridge preaching. Scientists. You don't go into scientists and say, surrender to Krishna. You present a paper saying, all in all technical language, and saying that, just like the monograph by Dr. Richard L. Thompson, Sadaput, demonstration by information theory that life cannot arise from matter. And that's the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. But he doesn't say, he doesn't put Bhagavad Gita verses in there. It's all technical and scientific symbols. There's bridge preaching. Very much approved by Prabhupada. Maharaj, when... <clears throat> One question. I've got nothing. If, if, pe if you can get people to do yoga and then they surrender to Krishna, fine. <laughs> Great. But if they, uh, if they end up just doing yoga, <laughs> then what did, what's the point? We wasted our time. You have to see. Judge by the result. There is one question which was commonly been asked, uh, especially to me, uh, that have you stopped giving second initiations to your female disciples? No. I pretty much stopped giving it to almost everyone. <laughs> Not only to females, because the idea is if we're going to establish Varnashram, and we make everyone a Brahmana, then where's the Varnashram? There should be Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras. So, Brahmanical initiation should be for men who are living as Brahmanas. Otherwise, if someone's working in a job, getting a salary, then where's the Varnashram? Pancharatruki Diksha can be given to everyone, men, women, if they're devotees. But as far as designating everyone as a Brahmana, from my understanding of Prabhupada, he, he's, he himself said so many times, it's not that everyone has to be a Brahmana. As a Vaishnava, everyone's more than a Brahmana. But if we're going to have Varnashram, then we can't just call everyone a Brahmana, because it's, then it becomes meaningless. And there's no Varnashram. So generally, I don't give Brahminical initiation to those who are working in a job. Maharaj, there was a commonly <coughs> there was another question that in your classes you make people differentiate and like. Uh, uh, I make them what? You. Uh, in your, in your Bhagavatam classes, you make people sit, if, if someone is a Shudra, Vaishya, Brahmana and Kshatriya, they sit separately. Really? Which lifetime was that? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so this was, this, was a, a, a this was a question which has been uh, discussed. Uh, by who? By, so by someone, I don't wish to take the name, but... Hmm. Well, uh, why, first you should try to find out if it's true. <laughs> Bhakti Vikas Swami drinks three gallons of chicken blood first thing in the morning. <laughs> we should discuss this. Well, first you should discuss if it's true. Uh, 
that's, uh, yeah, it's, people have active imaginations. But a second last question. <coughs> There's a, in the current uh, scenario there, we, we, we see, you see the, the, the topic of the female Diksha Guru is going on. But, uh, so the, there, is, there are disputes among the devotees. But what message uh, would you like to give to your followers in, in, in this situation? What should be their mood? Hmm. Yeah, it's difficult because uh, it's almost like what something is out of your control and you 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 can't do anything. You can try and say, but then the the whole movement is in a very precarious situation on the, on the verge of a split. It's a very, uh, and it seems there's nothing we can do about it. So, go on chanting Hare Krishna and... Uh, the last question, The Maharaj. best we can. The last question, Maharaj. Mm. This was, this was been also discussed very heavily uh, amongst the Senior devotees there, will you live there in Mayapur? There. Will you leave Iskon? They're hoping I do. <laughs> in the uh, in the Buddhist tradition, Just after Buddha left, the, the, all the leaders came together and then they discussed, where do we go from here? And in the course of the history of Buddhism and in the course of the history of Christianity, there have been times when some kind of logjam had come and the, the different groups, they couldn't agree with each other. So they come together, they had Buddhist councils, first Buddhist council, second Buddhist council, then Vatican, the Christian councils, and then they all sit together, maybe for weeks and months, and discuss everything thoroughly. And then they decide, what, where are we going to go from here? After thorough discussion, however much time it takes, not that we have a meeting and we have to, by the time this meeting is over, we have to set the course for the whole Krishna conscious movement. We have to make some major change that's going to affect the whole movement in future. But we have to do it because we have to finish the meeting. But in such a crucial situation, better we take the time, however much time. If it takes one year, take one year. If it takes five years, take five years. Sit and discuss and then come to a conclusion. And then if, if others don't like it, then they have to leave, that's all. That's what happened in Buddhism and Christianity. They do that. So I would say, better we all come together and discuss. And uh, Prabhupada's plans for Varnashram, should we not be trying to implement that? Should that not be discussed? At least it should be discussed. If we, if we think that we can't do it now, at least we should say we can't do it now and give the reasons why, although Prabhupada wanted it done immediately. So there it's, you see this question of female Diksha Guru is just one question. The whole direction of the movement should be ascertained. We should take the time to do that in, as far as possible in a cool-headed way. But what I see now is just each... Uh, you're a feminist, you're a misogynist, and there's, where's the progress? It's just coming together, and there'll be some split. Maharaj, please forgive me for mm. asking you these questions. Yeah. But I thought that this was very, this were very important, and we're creating so many misunderstandings. Will I leave ISKCON? Actually, I, at least privately, I... I I used to say, if they push this female Diksha Guru thing through, then where, where does the last straw come? We have a 
gay-friendly movement in which homosexual marriages performed by ISKCON officials are allowed. It's not officially allowed, but it's going on and no one, there's nothing from the higher level saying not to do it, so... Brazil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's rumors it's been done in America by an ISKCON guru also. But rumors are rumors. It's rumored that, what was that? Uh, that I, I make the Brahmanas and Vaishyas all sit together separately. There's no, no basis in fact whatsoever. It's completely new to me. I never heard any such. So it may or may not be true. Um, but uh, yeah, there are so many things which I'm unhappy about. And does there, does there come a point where you say enough is enough? like the frog being cooked in the water. You know that example? You have a frog in a pot of cool water, gradually you heat it, and the frog doesn't notice that he's getting, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and when it's too late, he can't jump out. He's cooked. So it's like that. Slouching to Gomorrah. There's a book in America, written by a Christian who's says that our Gomorrah in the Old Testament, it's a city which is full of all vice. So slouchy, it means you're going slowly with awkward steps, we're, we're just going to hell. That's, that's the, uh, that's the, it, the uh, message that the title of that book gives. So, Hare Krishna, study Thank your you Bhagavatam, chant Hare Krishna, be happy. Whatever happens, whatever is done that shouldn't be done, or is not done which should be done, you go on chanting Hare Krishna. Whatever anyone else may do, you can go on chanting Hare Krishna and studying Prabhupada's books. And keep association with those who are serious to do so.